And joining me today <laughs> is Chelsea Hamilton. Hi. You hold the state record yes. in squat yes. for your body weight. Yes. What was for that weight? And deadlift. Ready? I'll play by the rules. Okay, ready? All right. What's your relationship status on Facebook? <laughs> It was like to the point where when I like was getting out of the phase, like going into high school and like trying to be cool in that area, I was like, okay, we can't. And I would stay after and I would, I'd work on my deadlift. <laughs> I was you like, that, I was obsessed. I, I started to secretly become like obsessed with it in the back corner. What, what are your goals with this? Well, how has this evolved and where do you see this going? That's a really good question. You're gonna die when I tell you my response to this. Let's hear it. <laughs> Welcome to the Barbells and Bourbon podcast, the podcast that allows real people to tell real stories. I am your big, bald, bearded, barbell, lip, and bourbon drinking son of a bitch. And joining me today <laughs> is Chelsea Hamilton. Hi. What's going on? Wow. Welcome to our home. Thank you. Thank it's good you. to meet you. Yeah. We've never met before. No. Never met. I follow you on social media, so I see some of the badass things you're doing. Yes. <laughs> and you hold the state record yes. in squat yes. for your body weight. Yes. What was for, that weight? And deadlift. Um, 303 for my squat. And then it was 375 um, in competition. That's yeah. crazy. Now, do you still power lift? Mm -hmm. I do. Yes, I'm taking a break right now um, just to focus on my bodybuilding and life goals. Honestly, I hit my powerlifting life goals. So it was a 300 squat, yeah. uh, 400 deadlift, which I got 405 and 303. Just this, it was in September I hit 405. My competition in December I hit 303. And then my bench... Honestly, all, all I've ever wanted to hit was 150. I hit 170 this year. Yeah. So bench is always just whatever I did last year, just a little, just better, a little better this year. Yeah, yeah it's well, just not a lift yeah. that I'm I'm super focused on. Um, but yeah, so I hit my lifetime goal numbers with powerlifting. I'm sure I will be back um, to chase a 900 total. I think my total's 878 right now. So you're really damn close. Very close to 900. Yeah. So I think if I have another goal left in me, it's not so much a number chase on a lift, but just to hit that 900 total and probably be done. So for those who don't know, powerlifting total means total combined bench squat deadlift. Yes. So 900 total, that's pounds? Yeah. Not kil kilograms would be a lot of weight. That would be a lot. <laughs> that would be a yeah. lot of weight. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll get into your whole fitness journey and yeah. you know, your current goals, future goals, and all that good stuff. But I want to know more about you. Like, cause I'm sure you weren't born powerlifting. So I want to know like what <laughs> no. drew you to doing all that stuff and what drew you to doing what you're doing today. But first, where are you from? I'm from here, right in Pittsburgh. I grew up in Plum. I graduated from Plum and now I'm over in Upper St. Clair, but born and raised in Pittsburgh. Go Mustangs. Yeah. So I graduated in 97 from Plum. What year were okay. you? Oh, six. <laughs> okay i'm old yeah so you're 30 36 six. Yep. okay yep 37 this year and you said you knew tori my yes. previous guest a few episodes ago yes okay. i we were never friends i just i knew of her yeah. in um middle school and high school okay well you must be thirsty chelsea because you traveled with about an hour yeah it's, if traffic's bad what is it two hours Coming from, coming, because either I go 28 or the parkway, if it's the parkway and there's traffic, yeah, it's yeah. close. Okay, it's, so let's, you said you don't want to drink bourbon. No, I, I don't want to drink bourbon. And I, I respect that. Um, yeah. Again, it's I'm, not. I'm not a big drinker these days. I will drink. I'm not good at drinking. <laughs> it doesn't okay. mix well with anybody that knows me knows when I drink. It's just, it just doesn't mix well. You know, like I, I just. Like you're. Your actions? Yes. Your, your yeah. Behavior. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I was okay. a huge party girl. We can get into that oh, yeah. too. But yeah. I just, and I mean, it's not that I don't drink anymore. I do. Um, but I just, I'm very high functioning these days. I have a lot yeah. of high goals. And even just 
even just a glass of wine anymore, it just, it throws me off completely. Well, and if you're I, not used to drinking and you don't build a tolerance to it, one drink is going to cause yeah. an effect. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. well, I mean, at least you acknowledge that you can't, you can't yeah. really do alcohol. Yeah. All right. So we're going to have something else. And the fine folks, yes. Prodigal Nutrition, sent me some goodies that I can share with my guests who don't want to drink alcohol on the show. So I have collagen, the Irish cream flavor, good for your skin and nails and all that good stuff. And I have Amino Evolution and Embrax. Amino Evolution is obviously your aminos, BCAAs, and EAAs, and Embrax is the thermogenic. It heats you up, and it's already warm in here. So I'm not going to have Embrax. I do love Embrax, but now I'm not going with this Embrax today. This is not today. the time or the place for it. No, so, I'm going to go for my skincare. I'm going to go for collagen. <laughs> okay, so if you want to pull that off, yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to have some aminos. I you probably shouldn't put a full scoop in that little glass. It might get mm -hmm. too yeah, thick. Is. What's your um, Project One discount code, Chelsea? Chelsea. Well, that's easy to I remember. keep it really simple across the board for all that's of my really discount codes. Simple. It's just Chelsea. I'll, I'll link your... I started there, and that's just where, where I kept it. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I'll link all your social media and your discount code and all that what good do, stuff. What do you go by with your... I am BTC10. Break the okay. chains 10. Yeah. That makes and you're sense. just Chelsea. Just Chelsea. No number. Just Chelsea. That's it. People are going to think that they get a big bigger discount for you. Well, on my, you have a 10. well, you know what, on my links that you have to click on, it tells you what the percent is before you click on it. So, okay. Put some water in there. Oh. I drank that out of that help. bottle already, so I don't want to pour my possible backwash in your. <laughs> That's good. Thanks. So while I'm mixing this, can you put that jug back on the shelf, yep. please? Did you see the episode when I was on with Dom? And I was mixing this. Yes. And it went. It, yes. You, you, you might not have seen it, but it went everywhere. I think I do. And I had to stop recording at one point and clean it up because it was terrible. These are the same color. Aren't those little mixers awesome? I love it. They're like $5. I, and they're I like the best little things. <laughs> for this podcast. Did you? Yeah. So Chelsea, what do you, how do you mix your collagen if you're taking it? What do you do with it? What's my favorite morning mix? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. What do you typically so, do? You, I'm guessing you just don't have it in plain water, or do you? So I my base is plain filtered water. I fill up a big Project One blender bottle. Half of a, a whole, like half of a, a real lemon, fresh squeezed lemon, just really big on fresh squeezed lemon. Um, and then I'll do greens. Sometimes I'll add a scoop of reds, but usually it's just the collagen and the greens, water, okay. fresh lemon. It's, it's so Sounds good. Sounds delicious. Cheers. Yeah. Welcome. I haven't so eaten smooth. in the last four and a half hours, which is unusual for me. So I need a little supplementation, right? A little now. supplementation. <laughs> I could go down. On the show, you might. Have we don't to, want that to happen. No, no. We'll just keep rolling though. You can, you can just I'll take just over. I'll just talk. I'll be like, well. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, Chelsea. We already talked about you having powerlifting records, and yes. I alluded to some fitness, other fitness stuff. What got you to this point? Take me back to your childhood, and let's learn about Chelsea yes. growing up. Okay. So. My childhood, family-wise, um, just, you know, aside from fitness, was very normal growing up. Like I said, I grew up in Plum. I have a younger sister um, close to my mom and dad. They're still here in Plum. They have, as you know, they just literally picked up my kids mm -hmm. uh, with my dog Convenient. from your house. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Plum. And um, as far as my childhood, I was very much like my daughter. Um, I, although I wasn't super into sports, okay. um, surprisingly I played sports, but I wasn't competitive in them. So how were you like your daughter? <sighs> Just determined, whatever it okay. was that I was going to do, you know, when I played like even football with the boys in the neighborhood, I mean, it was just, just competitive, 
but not in like school sports. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so you just had a very competitive personality. Was it, yes. was it a little bit stubbornness too? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as the, the fitness portion came into play in my childhood, it wasn't through sports. It was through WWE wrestling, <laughs> WWF at the time, right? Back in the day, WWF. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I was, oh gosh, what year was it? I was probably 11, I want to say. When you got into When I started to get wrestling. like really it was it was the attitude era, right? Stone Cold, The Undertaker, mm. China, all of those guys, right? I was obsessed. Like I had the cardboard stand-ups. Like that's what I asked for for my birthday. I had a VHS collection of all of their different workout videos cuz that's what they came out with, yeah. right? You know, to sell their stuff was a workout video and I would do it, you know, and that that's that's how I got started. I would literally do home workout videos and I was so obsessed with China. I made everybody call me China. Do you should... remember, like, I don't know if guys sent notes back in the day, but you remember, like, the notes, like, we'd fold them Will up. Will you go out like, with a... me? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> those like types that. of things? Yeah, but, like, the girls would, like, fold them up and, like, like throw, like, you know. One of those, like, yeah. what are those things called? No, no, no. Not that. Yeah, not that. No, that was a, um, that was your fortune. Yeah. Yes, I know what you're talking fun. about. So fun. Um, no, but this was like you folded it up like a football. You wrote a note to your friend. It was just like yeah. a page, whatever. And you would like pass it to them through the floor. Okay. Like you don't remember that? I, I mean, I vaguely. think it was more of a Chelsea, girl thing. I didn't have many friends oh, in school. Okay. <laughs> we can, we might talk about that, but continue. Okay, we'll get there. So you got, you got notes. You pass yeah, notes. Yeah. I like, Every, I, I have them kept like I have a shoe box of like notebooks. I'm, I'm, I'm a hoarder. I keep so much from my childhood, but all of them say China. And wow. if you wrote Chelsea, I would get mad. <laughs> like everyone in school had to call me China. So you identified as China. Yes. It was like to the point where when I like was getting out of the phase, like going into high school and like trying to be cool in that area, I was like, okay, we can't, I don't think we should be calling me China anymore. <laughs> we need to revert back. Yeah. I'm not going to get too many friends like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So were you a but, tomboy? Because I, I kind of see a girl into wrestling who's in wrestling as being a tomboy. I'm, maybe I'm completely off base. I, it was like personality wise, yes, but looks wise, not really. Okay. I was always pretty feminine. And while China, she was... I hate saying this word, but she was more masculine or manly, right, than yeah. the rest of all the other women. But I was obsessed with the fact that she wrestled the men. Like, okay. she was different than all. She was just on a higher level. She was on a different playing field. And that was just the coolest thing to me. So is that what drew you to her? I think so. It so, was just she was so much more badass to me than so the rest So it wasn't so much them. her look. It was just yeah. the domination and the the women empowerment side maybe yeah but then she when she first came out she was very masculine she came out i don't know if you remember any of this but she was the bodyguard for dx and she was huge so as like a couple years went by she started to get purposely more feminine and she ended up getting a centerfold and playboy she okay. she became more feminine and i became more obsessed with her as she became more feminine okay. because right yeah yeah. So anyway, I was obsessed with that whole look. I was obsessed with wrestling. I was going to be a WWE wrestler. I would wrestle like all of the neighbors. We would <laughs> we would make our parents order the pay per view. Yeah, it was it that was a funny. it was a really big part of my childhood. And those fitness videos went with me for years. Like even after I didn't watch it anymore. Yeah. And then I um, eventually got a gym membership, and one thing turned to the other: basic bodybuilding movements mm -hmm. and. The rest is history. <laughs> so other than wrestling and wanting to be China, what else were you into as your childhood? Did you, I mean, did you get good grades? Did, did you have a lot yeah. of friends? Like, yeah. 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 I was on homecoming court. Um, I would say I was, I, I, like I said, I didn't really play sports um, in high school. I preferred to work. I had a job at the tanning salon. The tanning salon was connected to a gym. So I got a free gym membership. And I just remember telling my parents, Which I- gym? Um, uh, so Tantastic connected to, um, Alexander's gym in okay. Harmerville. Yeah. It's my home base. I still go there to this day Got sometimes. It. I went and there for years. I used to work in RADC park. Okay. Yeah. Right up the road. 
And I used to go during my lunch break with some buddies for years. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, continue. It, what's really funny about the fact that that is like my home base gym that I went to for years is the owner, Jeff, yeah. is the brother of Tracy, who owns Life Force, which is my current gym now. <laughs> and okay. I had no idea. So okay. that was just like, it's just everything is so small. So. Yeah. Especially in the fitness industry. Very. Yeah. Yes. Um. But yeah, so no, I, I remember telling my parents, I, I just really like working. Like I get free tanning here. I, I love working out at the gym. I don't want to play sports. I want to do this four days a week on top of school. And that's, that's where I was in high school. So you started working pretty young. I did. Yeah. And then I, my fitness was kind of on pause. Like I said, I kind of became a party girl. I went to college. I went to WVU. Um, Big party school. I did get back into fitness. Like, I kind of had phases where I would, um, you know, work times where I would work out more than others. Um, but college is where I learned how to power lift. I was not competitive. I didn't lift heavy weight. But um, one day I was bicep curling five pounds probably at the time. And uh, my friend George came up to me and said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wasting like, your time like, yeah yeah it was literally so yeah. just come with me and he showed me at least how to pick up weight off the floor with my back straight and I took that with me I mean I I never I was like I wore a powerlifting team shirt because he was on the powerlifting team and I mm -hmm. trained with them but it wasn't super serious right. for me yeah. but when I graduated college I took all of that with me so I always strength trained that way I mean I always knew how to squat I knew how to deadlift it just wasn't with heavy weight until later so did the wrestling thing was that still in the back of your mind at that point or yeah. had you grown out of it i had grown out of it at that point okay it's circling back now it's weird <laughs> oh, like okay. not that i'm like aspiring to be a wwe wrestler at this point but it's just there's just a lot that's resurfaced in my life that's brought me back to you know that person and that's more what i mean by that okay yeah. So you went to WVU, which is yes. West Virginia University. It's Morgantown, about an hour and a half south of Pittsburgh-ish. Yep. Mm -hmm. What did you go to college for? IT. Okay. My job now. Yep. So you for... ended up using that in your career? Correct. Yeah. So you're an IT what? Yeah. Um, IT analyst is what I am uh, at my job now. I've been with Walgreens um, Specialty Pharmacy for nine years now. Okay. Um, but I've always been in IT. I went to school for, um, I went to the business school for, it was called what, Management Information Systems. Yeah. Um, so that was my degree. And yeah, I mean, I, I wrote code for, I was a programmer for probably first eight to 10 years. And then now I'm more of like a liaison role. I don't write as much code now. It's okay. more kind of giving direction, working with developers back and forth with the business. What got you into doing that? Because, I mean, <laughs> you, your image does not paint yeah. that as a, a IT analyst or a coder. And you were into yeah. powerlifting and, you know, fitness. And so what took you down that route? So you asked me if I was, if I got good grades. I did. I was always a straight A student. Um, all the way through high school, I got really good grades. And so I was smart, <laughs> right? Yeah. I knew I could pretty much, you know, do whatever I wanted to do. Good. I did not want to work with people. And I, I truly don't know the entire reasoning behind that. I, I just didn't. I knew I wanted like a job where I could keep to myself I did not want to be in a hospital. I knew that. My mom was a nurse. So uh -huh. just seeing a lot um, of that growing up just made me not really want to be in a hospital environment. So I don't know. Honestly, it was as simple as I'm really good with numbers. I love math. I thought about being a math teacher. That was actually my major when I first, you know, my, my freshman year. Okay. Um, I got an internship. I was obsessed with my manager who was in her mid thirties. She was such a badass, but she was a web developer. And so I kind of just so followed the, the IT. I, I see the theme. You cling, cling to powerful women. I do. I yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. You, I guess you admire that. I do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's very interesting. Now, IT analyst, do you work from home? Do you work in an office? I do. I used to work in the office and then when COVID hit, I was in the office two days a week. So hybrid. 
So they just kicked us out. <laughs> Once COVID hit, they were like, yeah, yeah. we'll come back. Yeah. So yeah, I've been home ever since. I think, you know, I work from home full time too. How do you like working from home? I like it. I don't think I would want to go back. Um, but you I don't like people. <laughs> well, I do now. That's the thing okay. is I've evolved. It's, it's, it's strange. Um, but now I forget what I was saying. Working from home. Do you like it? I, I do miss, t it, it was nice getting a break those two days a week. I remember I went in Tuesdays and Thursdays and it was just nice to even socialize outside of work yeah. just to, you know, see people because ugh, it's scary how much I could talk to my dog and my cat. I <laughs> mean, I'm it? alone a lot, yeah, a lot. So I work from home, like I said, and there's times where I might get out of my chair twice yeah. in a full work day. Yeah. Wants to eat, wants to let the dogs out. Yep. And you don't talk to people. You don't interact with people in person. You're on Teams or Zoom all day long. And then mm -hmm. when work's over and I finally go to the gym, it's almost like I want to hide from people because I'm so used to not being around people. Yeah. So I find myself sometimes being more introverted because I'm, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird, but... I think having to go to an office, even if it's just a few days a week, I get more motivated yeah. when I work out of an office because yeah. you're there for one purpose only. Yeah. When you're home, freaking be in your pajamas and work. Yeah. And it's just hard to like get in the zone sometimes. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So I think it's important to have like a good solid morning routine, especially when working from home, kind of kick your ass in the gear. So I actually went through this. Like this past year, I kicked myself in the butt because I was, I was getting lazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was taking my computer, like where I was working, but I was in my bed and it was just, and finally I said no more. And I made, I like, I made my office set up a little more of a happy <laughs> homey yeah. space. Yeah. You know, I was a little happier, more excited about yeah. it. And I made sure every morning I was down there logged in, you know, at a certain time and that I, it just. You kind of have to do that because yeah. if you don't have that routine, you can't, you know, oh, what's this? Oh, my I laundry. Know. I got to go put it in. You know, it's it's easy to get sidetracked. Well, I know when summer rolls around and if any of my managers are <laughs> going to be watching this, I have a pool in the backyard and I'll take yeah. my laptop out onto the deck and work for 30 minutes, jump in the pool for 15, yeah. work for 30. But I need to get out. You know, I feel like a prisoner in my own home sometimes. And it's tough. Right. So you said when you go to the gym, there's some days you just don't want to talk to people. So this is a whole thing for me um, because I have no, like I'm introverted and extroverted. It just depends on it really, the atmosphere, it, your mood. Yes. Like, yeah. like it just depends on the day, the time of day, what's going on. But I'll go into the gym and I'll talk to someone and I will to the point where I'm talking their ear off and I'm like, okay, I've got to like you know, reel in here, yeah, you know, you're the probably annoy. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm annoying them. Same person. We'll see this person the next day. It doesn't matter who it is. Right. Just same person. And I'm like, like, really? I just, well, I'm just not in the mood. Like I don't want to. And I, and then I feel bad if it's awkward because I'm like, Hey, and I they're like, we were friends. they're expecting this person to be like, here's my life story. And yeah. today I'm like, I don't have it in me. Do you think <laughs> that has to do with today? Do you think that has to do with the kind of day you had leading yeah, up to that point? Yeah, just what's going into it, what my mood is. Um, and two, like what my workout is. Like if it's an upper body day, yeah, I don't like, especially if I'm not benching, I crush my shoulders, but it's it's not real serious focused. Um, whereas if I'm going and I have, I, I have to squat, you know, 250 for five. Yeah. I, I'm not talking to anyone. I'm just... Some it's, days I do, but it uh, more likely on a day like that, I'm not. It's funny you say that because there's probably people at the gym that think I'm the biggest dick or the biggest douche because I don't get too much time to myself. Mm -hmm. I work all day. Then I usually have 45 minutes to an hour to myself at the gym mm -hmm. before I start training my clients. So that 45 minutes to an hour is like super important to me. So I usually try to not look at people. I try not to socialize. Yeah. I put on my big ass Bose noise canceling, yeah. put a hat on, kind of pull it down and just hope that 
no offense if <laughs> you talk to me at the gym, but I hope just not to get interrupted. Because yeah. you know what happens. Yeah. You start yeah. talking for a couple minutes, five minutes goes by, God forbid, more than that. And at that point, you're just not in the zone anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You might as well just leave. You're somewhere else. <laughs> you're, it's, it's like you're, you're losing your pump. And it's just like... One thing I noticed while I did just say that I'm more I'm less likely to talk to someone on a big squat day. In general though, with powerlifting training, I am way more social. Like I take my time, it's more about the big lift. Yeah. Um Well, powerlifting you take longer breaks because it's all about the strength. You do. You want to recover all the way. But what I'm saying is is like I'll take it the extra step. Like You'll catch me at the gym for three hours on a powerlifting day. Don't need to be there three hours. No. It just, that's how long it takes. But when I'm in my bodybuilding, I don't know what it is, the mindset, just because I know like there's a certain amount of, even though I do accessories for powerlifting too, it's just, it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It is like a different mindset when I go in and I'm very, when people talk to me, I'm more like, okay, like I got to get to my yeah, next yeah, set. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm, it's different. Like, it's very yeah. different. I think- the bodybuilding split is definitely more regimented and structured. It's a certain amount of sets. You're trying to hit a certain amount of reps for each set. And then the rest times are fairly controlled. Right. Because if they get too long, like I said, you're mentally not there anymore. Right. You're losing your pump. You're just not in it. So I think that's probably – and then powerlifting, yeah, you kind of walk around, get yourself psyched up, yeah. go say hi to someone. Yep. I don't powerlift, but I see – enough of people doing it <laughs> you see enough of the stereotype it's a, yeah it's a totally different um, it is vibe yeah but yeah yeah so three three hour workout a vibe that most times the rest of the gym doesn't like <laughs> yeah do you have the big ass jug of water no do you have chalk well do you get do you leave chalk trails everywhere you go Pretty, I mean, I have my talk. I have my my big bag. It comes with me where I am. Um, but I mean, the gyms that I go to, there's already chalk around. Like it's yeah. not. It's pretty normal. So, what determines what workout you're doing that day? Do you follow a specific plan, or do you just kind of wing it? Whatever my goal is at that time. So, so what's your goal right now? So it's funny you ask. This is the first time. Hold on, let me think. Since. The end of 2021, so 20 since the beginning of 2022, I have had a something in sight and a reason to train a specific way. Yeah, Rota yeah, yeah rotating, end goal. But it's yeah. And right now, so my the Arnold's, which was March 1st, that was my fifth bodybuilding competition in 10 months. And my last powerlifting competition was in December in between the fourth and fifth bodybuilding competition. So training for so, powerlifting and training for a bodybuilding show, you do bikini. Yes. Those are different. Very different. Training styles, different eating styles. How did you do a bikini show three months after a powerlifting meet? <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> And that's the all only, folks. It's the, it's the only explanation. I'm I'm crazy. I'm I'm hungry for my pro card. I okay. want my pro card. That's what I'm set out for. So I guess we'll just I'll I'll give you guys my whole little bodybuilding timeline. So I did my first show in 2019. I wanted I was I was a power lifter, but I was doing a ton of bodybuilding because I realized that my numbers weren't gonna go anywhere until I grew glutes, a back. I just didn't have yeah. enough. So it was all bodybuilding work. And a friend of mine decided to do her first figure competition. So I started to see the realm. I started, you know, I, I had joined Life Force. So I started to see the whole body build unravel yeah. in front of me, which I hadn't really before. Yep. So I said, okay, well, while I'm focusing on this whole bodybuilding thing and growing, you know, all the muscles that I need to for powerlifting, I'm going to step on stage and see how I like this. Yeah. I like getting glammed up. I'm a girly girl. Let's do this. I like lifting. China. I'm China. I'm China. <laughs> I can do it. Um, I was pretty nervous, I would say, but I won the whole competition. It was a smaller regional show, but I took the whole thing. I didn't expect that at all. And I fell in love with that whole, with the Just feeling, the what happened. Yeah. yeah. But Did I, you have a coach? 
I did. Okay. Um, Sarah was my first coach. I wanted to try someone um, local out, see how it went, and she was wonderful. Yeah. She was at my show. She coached me from, like, that show was just, that's one of the most fondest memories in my life. The first that show, show ever. My first show ever. Yeah. And, they, and somebody told me before that show, they said, it might have actually been Sarah now that I'm thinking about it. They said, there's just, you can't relive this. So no matter like what happens, because it just gets more competitive, yeah. harder, you know what you did wrong, but going in your first show. It's almost like you don't know what to worry about. You, you don't yes. know what to expect. So you're just open mind. Yeah. Let's have some fucking fun. Yeah. Right? And, it, and it was like the best case scenario. Like I won. It was wonderful. So I knew that I wasn't like pro ready. It was a regional show. I knew I needed to take time off. I had some life things planned. So I didn't compete again until two years later. I was prepping for the Pittsburgh, but then everything fell apart with COVID. Yeah. So after that competition was prepping for the Pittsburgh, I think my show got canceled. I ordered a pizza that day. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was Fuck just, it. I was so, I was, I was mad. I was, I was, oh, yeah. I was really resentful about how, COVID. How far into the prep were you before they canceled? Oh, it? well, so you figure the Pittsburgh was probably on like May 6th or 7th. COVID hit mid March. I don't think they canceled until a first or second week of April. Maybe. I mean, I was like, you know, four you're, or five, six weeks out somewhere in that. pretty much show ready. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty, it's all about hard remember. work. Yeah. So I just ordered a pizza. And then that year was just very not fitness related for me. I mean, I remember I drank a lot of wine. I watched the whole Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, everybody. Everyone has their own COVID story. Truly, yeah. right? Um, I, I really kind of lost myself there, and it was it it was interesting because I really wasn't affected by COVID in the sense that. I mean, I started working from home all the time, mm. but I wasn't personally affected with a family member, but it was just a daunting time. It was. But anyway, back to the fitness journey. So that whole year was like a bust. Um, and then the next year I competed and it was basically a, a my prep was basically a weight loss journey and recovery from what I ha what happened in COVID. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I stepped on stage, I looked good. I think I got eighth or ninth place. It was not great. My conditioning just wasn't there. But I was ready. That's when I was like, okay, I'm not undeniable. I know my conditioning wasn't there, but I knew even if it was there, I've got some work to do. Okay. So I hired James and we worked together for uh, almost, I think, a little over a year. And then I, that's when I started my journey to get to truly go for my pro card, which was this past year. And I'm so close. <laughs> So, so close. Was the is was the Arnold a pro qualifier? It was, but the Arnold was the most difficult show that I did out of all of them. Um, it's so you can't get your pro card in the masters class for the Arnold, oh, and there's right, only you're masters because you're over thirty five. Yeah, but I can I compete in open and masters. Okay. Um, so I only I did open only uh, for the Arnold because I was only interested in my pro card, pro card. Yeah. so um i got fourth place and you had to get the top two overall mm -hmm. so it just wasn't there uh but north americans was my best show i got second place twice i i was in the open class and masters got second twice so i was really optimistic with all the feedback that i had gotten this past year going into the arnold but i've just got some work to do still what what do you need to work on? What are the judges' feedback? Crazy enough, my glutes, yeah. <laughs> which is my – it's it's my strength, really, in my back pose. Um, but I just – I've got to grow my upper glutes um, and just – while I don't get – I don't get negative feedback on my belly, but it's just obvious in my genetic structure that it's wider, shorter – just yeah, a large – Shorter feet. torso. Yes, shorter yeah. torso. So it just – You can't help that. You can't, but I cannot power lift. <laughs> yeah, because so, that's building the core muscles right, and making right. your midsection larger. So to answer your question about that and juggling both back and forth, it's been a really interesting journey because my whole persona is like I want to be like tiny and mighty. 
Like, I, I want to be as strong as possible, but I don't want to eat into, like, the next weight class. Yeah. I want to be small. I want to be lean. I want to be feminine and present myself the way that I do. But I also want to lift hundreds of pounds. So it's been this balance of, you know, juggling that, making bodybuilding essentially the priority, and then getting the best numbers that I possibly can in conjunction with that. These were the conversations that I had with my coach, James. Mm -hmm. um, he advised me not to power lift um, just based on what my body, you know, looks like and the outcomes, you know, from the shows that I was doing. Um, but it got to the point where I felt like I was hiding my lifts. Like I would literally deadlift and like not want to tell him or like not post. Like I would like... <laughs> It was clear it was a struggle for me. I yeah. really wanted to because lift like it was that. a passion of yours. Yes, yes. Like I, 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 small and mighty. Yes. Yeah. It really, it was like hurting me that I would go to the gym and not be able to, yeah. you know, do everything that it's I was. Deadlift platforms calling your name. So finally, yeah. I had a conversation with him, and I was just like, I can't give this up. We've, I need to, like, I know, even though I'm making, you know, sacrifices here, I've got to make this work. So that's what we did. And so balancing them both. Balancing them yeah. with putting kind of bikini training first and foremost. I would keep my power during my prep. I would keep my powerlifting movements in, um, but we just you know we wouldn't push those movements. Heavy weights. And then going into off season, I would ramp that back up, throw in my powerlifting competition, and then reverse back out. <laughs> yeah, I know there's waist training things that can be implemented, whether it's that big ass belt thing or how like much of that the waist trainer that yeah. i wear do you, do you wear one? Oh yeah i wear one okay. all the time like all the time um lately i haven't just because i've been like I, I honestly i've only lifted i think this is crazy for me twice in the last two weeks i just really have been on a mental clearing of my fitness journey since okay. the arnold's just taking taking a step back well, you said you did five, was it five competitions in 10 months? Yeah. That's a lot on your body and it's your mind. It's a lot, yeah. That's a lot of stress and stress kills your physique. Yeah. So you, yeah. it sounds like you need to kind of step away for a little while. Yeah. Um, well, that being said, I'll probably be on stage this year again. <laughs> so much for that. So much for that. No, yeah. um, I my original, I say that because my original plan was to compete in May at Junior USA's. And I when I made the decision to compete at the Arnold, I knew that I would not be there whether I got right. my pro card or not. So um, it's definitely looking probably like later summer. Um, but that also plans on my growth too. Um, and what, you know, what my physique looks like because I, I want to be more undeniable. I mean, I've felt that I'm there, but now I, now I really understand, you know, getting all of the feedback. I get it. My, my, my posing needs a lot of work too. So here's a question. You said you've got judges feedback. Yes. Um, do you think the Arnold was just really hard of a competition? Meaning the girls that were up there were just maybe a little bit better. And if you do this show in the summer, even if you don't improve on the glutes and your midsection, do you think you could still get your pro card? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. So you're going, you're, you're going to do it no matter what. Oh yeah. I mean, okay. I, I'm pro ready right now. Like I can absolutely get my pro card depending on who shows up. Right. It's just, it's a matter of that. I've been so close. I think I've gotten third place, second place twice. I did get a sixth place and then I got fourth place. So it's just, I'm there. Like I'm, I'm constantly placing, I'm, you know, constantly top five. So I'm close, but. <laughs> okay. So I want to ask you something about judges' feedback. Okay. What, I know there's multiple judges at all shows, mm -hmm. and each judge is looking for something a little bit different, perhaps. A judge's eye is going to be drawn to one thing with one judge versus maybe another judge. What specifically have you received feedback-wise from the judges? Like, details. So... First of all, they say that that's not true, that judges don't look, you know, that it, it, the bikini criteria is the bikini criteria at every single show. And the judges stick very true to that. Um, but there is, there is hearsay and talk that 
like you said. I, I wanted to clarify that just okay. that they're so it's. It's, for for the people watching yeah. that don't necessarily know exactly what we mean, I mean there there is criteria, and the judge bikini is very subjective. It's the it's the most subjective, and Paige went through all of that. You mm. know, um, she did a wonderful job, by the way, Paige. You did a wonderful job <laughs> describing She's the, the different divisions. Yeah. She went through, and I was like, yep, she, yep, well, yep. She lives <laughs> bodybuilding. She does. She listens to bodybuilding. <laughs> She's podcast wonderful. All day. Yeah. She actually did my logo for me. Um, and we met at Life Force, design. so yeah, she's wonderful. Very but cool. it, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, there's hearsay that certain head judges prefer, like for bikini per se, that they one judge might prefer a more muscular look versus softer look. Um, so I don't know how much of that show to show. Um, there was for me because you know my conditioning changed show to show. You know we were making tweaks as well. Yeah. So my sh my feedback across the board for all five shows, and it's gotten better every single, like substantially better from my, uh, just even the Pittsburgh last year to the Arnold of my posing. Mm -hmm. My front pose for me is extremely difficult to hit because like I told you of my short torso, I do have a lot of erector muscle. So it's not, you know, for me to twist, I'm, I'm really working there just Got given, it. you know, my power lifting and my structure so posing is my biggest just just hit, a few tweaks just a few tweaks yeah. not being nervous on stage which which i fixed and then um one show i was told to um just watch the hardness and the size of my shoulders like they were too big or you were you were overly conditioned maybe sandy specifically told me she put her hands on my shoulders and she said you're you're okay but this is airing on the side too of too hard and too yeah. much. But yeah. both. It was like size and conditioning. And she said, just no more of it. Like, just Got keep it. it right where it is. Okay. And which I did. And that's, again, why I don't push my upper body too hard. Um, I'll usually go really hard during my prep. But in my off season, I kind of. You're trying to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is nice because um, I love training my back. Um, and I like to bench, obviously. But just. No. Is back judged in bikini? No, not at all. You just enjoy doing I it. I just enjoy having a strong back. So bikini, I love pull-ups. <laughs> how many pull-ups can you do? 15. I've hit 15 Shit. three different times and I can't break it. <laughs> We're talking like hands over pull-ups, not chin-ups. Yeah, go watch my videos. Okay, go yeah. watch your videos. Yeah, go watch my videos. <laughs> okay, because it drives me nuts when people say I can do so many, so many pull-ups and they're yeah. doing chin-ups instead. No, like this. Yes. Wide spread You're not kipping, lat. right? No kipping. Sorry, I was a, CrossFitters. Yeah, well, we didn't even get to that yet. Like my whole fitness journey. I was a CrossFitter. Oh, That's actually how I re got into like all the – reintroduced to all the powerlifting stuff. Okay. I want yeah, anyway, let's go – yeah, we got to go back to the, the bodybuilding. <laughs> <laughs> We're everywhere. <laughs> well, I, do, I, I do want to ask you one more thing. Yeah. You said one of the specific – feedback feedbacks you've received from judges was your glutes are too yes, small yes so how how are you trying to change that i'm not too small that's not the problem so like and I, I want you to know this too like any bikini girl that i know that i'm friends with you know through social media or whatever they're like i can't get over your glutes like i have like and james has said this to my previous like your back shot is like an olympian back shot but genetically, like my front pose is just, we I can only get it as good yeah, as it's gonna be. Sure. You know what yeah. I mean? So anyway, and my feedback from my glutes to hear that, I'm like, what do you mean? Like if there was one strength I had going into <laughs> each one of these pose. darn shows, yeah. yes, it was the back pose. It's the shape. It's the shape of them. So the size is great. They're very pleased with the size. And I, I had an in-depth conversation with this about Bill because, again, this was like my fifth show a couple weeks ago. So I was like, okay, like let's do a rundown. And Bill actually said a lot of it can be my – like I don't need to put a ton of mass on my glute. I do. It will help in my front pose. But it's less about adding a ton of mass and it's more just positioning exactly the right way in my front pose. Um <laughs> It's better for me to place my one foot more forward. You would not think that that would give you a better pop. You would think turning to the side. Yeah. The way I'm, the way when you kind of do that like weight shift. I'll practice later. Yeah, I'll, I'll, tell sh you, I'll, I'll show you. you. I'll show you. Bikini girls know what I'm talking about if they're watching. But it's it, you really get that pop. But then my belly 
to like oh. there's you know when you make certain tweaks to your posing you other stuff starts else. coming out so you just have to be really cautious isn't it wild how important posing is it's insane i seriously and i just want to say this to the people i have so much respect for dancers now that i have entered the bodybuilding world and i never thought i would say that i mean never yeah it is a lot of the bikini girls specifically bikini girls i'm talking they were former dancers and the way that they can move twist present their bodies on stage is it's like a dance and, and I, Paige even talks about that. It really, it, it's amazing. Like I, when I watch some of the pros pose, I'm like, whereas a couple years ago, I was like, oh yeah, I, like I'll be able to do that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just go, you know, you're going to twist a little bit. No, like it's, it's a whole thing. And I was never a dancer and I'm a power lifter. So I always joke and say, I'm like Shrek on stage. <laughs> so speaking of dancing, do you, do you follow male bodybuilding? I do. Yeah. Um, Urs. Yeah. Kalsinski. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm going to Greg Doucette, his pronunciation. Urs Kralsinski, classic physique classic, competitor. Yeah. His mom was a dancer. Okay. And he learned how to dance at a young age. And his posing routines are beautiful. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But anyways. Um. So I'm really excited though. Uh, Project One, uh, Laura. I don't know what her last name is, but she's a bikini competitor and she um, is also a dancer, okay. an instructor. So we're going to work together and I'm hoping that she can really help me. She said, I, I think I can really teach you um, techniques to, to move your body. Yeah. Um, I've had tons of posing classes, very helpful, um, but online. And I, I think having an in-person yeah, dancer. You need someone there to could Maybe be just yeah. a little bit yeah. I, I really for me especially just not being able to pick it up natural but those are my biggest two things to answer your question is okay. my posing just getting a really good flow hitting my front pose immediately not shaking in it and then just getting that glute to really pop that's it so it's not so much your body needs to change no you just not need at all. to change how to present your body correct and each show the the judge says you know come right back i mean you're not there's yeah there's don't nothing break crazy. anything. Yeah. 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 Okay. You mentioned CrossFit, <laughs> which makes me sad. I'm, I have nothing against CrossFit. Oh, I think you it's, do. I can tell. <laughs> is it obvious? It's just not for me. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a bodybuilder through and through. It's yeah. hard as fuck. I tried it a few times with Maria. She used to do CrossFit. Yeah. And it's it's hard as hell. And I know it is. I have a few CrossFitters who are going to be coming on, so I have to watch what I say. <laughs> Gotta be careful. So how did you get in the CrossFit? Yeah, so to it, this is actually like a segue from the journey we were talking about before. So I went to college, learned how to power lift, just learned the movements, um, you know, went into my normal career life in my 20s. I started running half marathons. Um, I just did very gen generic strength training. I would still deadlift and squat at LA Fitness. The China workouts on VHS. My little China workouts, yes. They were they were interesting. She did like um kickboxing and stuff. It was interesting. I would be Badass. I'd be in my my bedroom doing all the Shadow movements. Boxing. Mm -hmm. Um no, back to what I was saying though. Uh CrossFit. Totally, yes, CrossFit. So after I had my babies. I was not into um, like running anymore. And I thought about running, but really I just, I needed to get into a gym. I was walking, I had my kids back to back. Um, so they're a year and a half apart. I would push the stroller and then have my son strapped to me and I would do the neighborhood and we had just moved. But I was like, I have to get to a gym. Yeah. There were no gyms like within a close I needed something close I had babies your kids, yeah. yes so there was a CrossFit gym <laughs> um CrossFit South Hills lovely people I still talk to them today um I joined there not because I wanted to do CrossFit I just wanted a really close gym you and so I looked, child did they have child care or no it was just so close that no you it could, was just so yeah. close and I yeah and I had a convenient enough schedule sure. that it could work so I saw the price and I was like <laughs> Okay, I guess. Like I had so I had a friend that was like, "Oh, I love it. You should do it." So I'm like, "Okay." So I started CrossFit. I fell in love with it. 
Yeah. I really did. I mean, it had been so long since I had like picked up a barbell. I told you, you know, my fitness journey before kids was running. It was very just blah, you know, I was focusing on a lot of life things. So getting back to the gym like that and like doing ki- even the kipping pull ups, yeah. just learning all those movements, like it, it was the community. I was going to touch on that because I, CrossFit is big about the community. It's it just is. like a big family. And I and I really loved it there. Yeah. It was small and it was just it was exactly what I needed at that time in my life. And I am so it was a very short lived thing. I think maybe ten months and I was off to life forced to go pursue my first powerlifting competition. They didn't have enough open gym time for me to use the facility to also power lift. So I had to go. And that okay. was that was some of the CrossFit gyms. They're a little bigger, so they have more of like, um, you know, like a uh, and fully open mm-hmm. uh, weightlifting portion. So immediately, once I started doing the weightlifting movements, and I started to do the powerlifting movements, and it's our, a good foundation. It is for bodybuilding. It is, yeah. but I found myself. We would have like free time sometimes, and I would stay after, and I would I'd work on my deadlift. <laughs> I was like, I was obsessed. I I started to secretly become like obsessed with it in the back corner. And then I became friends with a few guys who were more of like the powerlifting realm. Mm. And then it was the rest was history. I think I pulled 205 one day. I was mind blown by the fact that I had, I had lifted 205 pounds of no training. Would you weigh like 120? At the time, yeah. yeah, I was sitting around 120, 125. I'm now more like 130. Mm-hmm. Um, like to- today, I'm actually like 126, surprisingly. Just today. That's pretty, <laughs> well, it's pretty close to my competition. That's why I'm like, it's, oh, yeah. It's because my stage weight is 123. I was going to so ask you. Yeah, I'm only. So you're still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, usually I, and it was really hard for my powerlifting competition to put on weight after my preps. Yeah. Okay. But so anyway, where are we? You mentioned Paige worked on your logo. Yes. What logo? For my fitness coaching business, Vogue Strength and Wellness. When did you start Um, that? So I came up with the idea, made my web page, started it, I think it was two years ago. Exactly two years ago in April. And so um, because I have my IT background, I went on to Wix. I like made my whole own website. I wrote it all up, you know. Um... And I just started putting stuff out there and then um, some life things happened and I was focusing on uh, being an athlete and chasing my pro card. So I kind of let it just kind of sit there. Yeah. Right. Like I'm not ready to fully market this yet. So it kind of just the idea and everything sat there. And now this year um, I have a couple clients on board and I'm trying to actually grow the business. What made you start? What made you want to start your own training coaching business i want to help people okay i really do and i i feel i think i felt some imposter syndrome you know even two years ago three years ago just just navigating this journey on my own um being an athlete has changed me forever forever like in every if i never compete again if i never get my pro card what I will take with me is it's indescribable. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you said, the mental state that you have to go through. Um, so anyway, I just whether people have goals to step on a stage, be an Olympian one day, lift 300 pounds, whatever it is, I want to help them. Okay. Um, you know, I've been able to achieve some really cool things that I never, never. I mean, if you asked 24 year old me. <laughs> You know, that would have wanted to be doing what I'm doing right now. I would be like, oh, gosh, no, I could never do that. I mean, that would have been my answer. So I'm here now at 36, and I feel that I can really help people to, you know, gain the confidence to to be who they want to be. So, I mean, you've been in a lot of different areas of fitness. Yes. So you definitely have a very well-rounded background Mm -hmm. to help those, regardless of their goal, like you said. You'll help anyone. Who's your primary, if you had to target a certain clientele, who would that be? What's going to be like the bread and butter? Probably me um, four years ago or five years ago saying, 
I just need to deadlift this amount of weight. I just need to lift this amount of weight with yeah. like not even like a ton of direction. Just I know I want to do this and I need you to help me get there. Just um, that's more pertaining to strength. I like strength training. I like I really enjoy helping people, um, you know, tweak their their own techniques based on their body to maximize their lifts. Like I, I love that portion of training. Um, but that being said, I'm, I think I'm ready to start uh, competition training. Like so show preps and I have never prepped anybody for a show. I prepped myself for my first show or my on my own yeah. uh, for the Arnold. Which you so... won, right? No, I, I oh, got fourth place. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Did you prep yourself for the Arnold? I did. That's crazy. Yeah, so I worked with Sarah for my first show ever. I worked with James all throughout um, this whole past year. Okay. And then I, I assumed you were with him for Arnold. Usually I take a break and I was going to go back to working with James, but just financially and what kind of where I wanted to go personally, I just decided to give it a try on my own. And I will say I would never be able to do it on my own without my journey with James. Yeah. So I definitely okay. credit him for, you know, in our what we did together. Yeah. Um, but anyway, to, to fully answer your question, though, I think that my ideal client is somebody who's very serious. I don't like... I understand that people go through things. I have been the client that doesn't check in. I have been. Yeah. Say it right now. I have been the client who has cheated and not reported it. I have. And yeah. it's it's not it's I not I respect very, you for admitting yeah, that. And, and I mean and I I but I have grown so much since I was that person. Um so I can help people, but I just I I just want people, I want to help people who are serious about what they want to do. That's one of the main struggles I have too, is you can only help people if they want helped. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that they can go into some sort of fitness journey, whether it's weight loss, getting stronger, competing, and just be able to give like half effort and it's, and it's going to work. It, it just doesn't work like that. Um, with that being said, what's the biggest struggle you've had with starting your own fitness business? Finding the right clients to help. How are you currently trying to find the right clients? Social media. Um, so like I said, just in this past year, I've really kind of ramped up, um, you know, marketing myself I'm putting myself out there. So really, it's just been social media. Okay. And that's been an interesting <laughs> journey in itself because I'm also an athlete. Um, so I also market a lot. Also market's the right word, but I share um, a lot of my accomplishments, a mm -hmm. lot of my modeling, a lot of my just, you know, I not so much my personal life and my fitness page, but it's been – Interesting trying to grow followers because you do have to grow. Fo I, I'm not interested in being Insta famous. Sure, I want more followers. Mm -hmm. You have to have followers to get exposure, to be chosen, for people to ch share yeah. your thing. You have right. to. So it's been a struggle of trying to grow my account um, with content that grabs people, but also putting content out there that is going to hit the real people that I want to, that I want to touch. Yeah. And that's, that's difficult. It's very difficult. And I've dealt with this too. And i everything that you're saying is just like hitting home for me. When I started my training business, it's been just over three years ago, online coaching, in-person coaching, fitness coaching is a very highly competitive place to be in, mm -hmm. especially in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh, it's fitness is big here. Bodyboating is big here. Like everyone's a personal trainer, it seems like. Yep. So how do you become different? How do you create your brand? Because that brand is what is going to stand out for you. Right. How have you tried to brand yourself? So for me, it naturally evolved, right, to a certain extent. Like I was already super into powerlifting, um, bodybuilding. And for me, because I don't have a degree 
right, in coaching. Um, actually, I have all of the, um, what is it? The, Certifications. So I have all of the NASM materials and core stuff. I bought it all. I just haven't actually paid for the course yet. <laughs> paid for the actual, to pay, I paid for the material. I did not pay to actually take the test yet. Well, if this is going to make you feel any better, I actually paid and I didn't do it. Really? I threw away like three grand. Why? I just couldn't find the time. Yeah. No, I didn't make the time. I'll just well, come you out and say that. I believe you can still use your material and just pay for the test. I'll have to try. Yeah. I mean, I think you'll be at a couple hundred bucks, but yeah. at least you can still get the certification. Yeah. That's kind of the boat I'm in, but you can just like do the test. But how, how important do you think having that certification not is? Not very important because you have to... I mean, I have actually read the book, like not every page, but I've gone through it. It's informative um, for how I want to help people. Yeah. There's just, there, you, there's so much more to fitness. It's not all science. You do have to have a book knowledge base to a certain degree, yeah. um, a certain level of experience. But I think some of the best coaches in the industry are ones that don't have degrees. They're the coaches that have... A ton of clients yep. who have obtained pro cards, yep. clients that have been through multiple preps with that same coach, yeah. um, just just learning the game by experience. And I, and it's not science. Like it's 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 not like it is from a when you're talking about like a a, a weight loss perspective. You know, generally speaking, sure. week to week, it, yes. It comes down to numbers. <laughs> yes, it does. To an extent. There's a science. But when it comes to like a, a bodybuilding peak week, I told you I've had five body, I've done five bodybuilding competitions. Two of the peak weeks looked almost identical. And then the other three were totally different. miscellaneous from each other. And it it's, you don't know how stress is going to impact your body health, certain food. I mean, even I was so nervous. I didn't even want to, just because I was coaching myself, um, I didn't even want to post my body because even though I'm so happy with how it looks three days out, yeah, a lot can lot change. Can happen. It's and like, it's, what happened you know, to you, you start pushing carbs and all of a sudden your weight starts, you know, dropping, you got to eat more. It's, there's just, there's a lot. And it's, people don't realize that. And no. they think it's just a, well, you're just going to eat chicken and rice and then you'll pull some carbs and then, you know, add this here and. Water load, pool water, Like, sodium. yeah, first competition, you got to go with something, yeah. right? But yeah. like. It, that's, and then you learn from there. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I, th I think it's good to definitely have a background um, you know, in nutrition, nutrition, I think even more so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not needed. I don't think in the fitness, um, I, realm. I agree. It, I, I think it helps open a door it because does. you're, you're certified and you seem like you but, know what you're doing by default, but yeah. But nobody could teach me what I know now right. and how to walk into show, a show as a competitor. Yeah. I paid you can't one read of, that in a book. I paid one of the top coaches. Yeah. He gave me every piece of information that I could possibly need until you walk the walk. Yeah. And the, so that's 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 what I pride myself on is I've I've done it. I've been there. Yeah. Like I, I know I know how this goes. I know I know what it's like to get under three hundred pounds to actually step on a platform to be judged, to get feedback, to, you know, work up to that day, to go through those emotions over and over, you know, yeah, year after year. So it just, it builds a lot of character and experience and um, it gives you the ability to really help people on that emotional level. Yeah. Because a lot of it's that, right? Yeah. A lot of it's our mindset and fitness. How important do you think it is to, I don't want to say build a friendship with a client, but just build build that trust? Because I, I had a coach when I did my show, when I turned 40, um, Morgan, Morgan Rice. Okay. You know who he is? Yeah, I know. Um, he's an amazing coach. He's mm -hmm. coached multiple pros. You know, it, he's undeniably a really good coach. He wasn't the coach for me. Mm -hmm. It was my first show. I was scared shitless. I couldn't 
build a friendship with him. He just wasn't that person. Mm -hmm. He was by the book. You know, do this, eat this, this much cardio. O oftentimes his check-in response was rinse and repeat. Yep. There was no emotion. It was just like, just fucking do it. That's not what I needed. I wanted to form like a friendship. You're going to die when I tell you my response to this. <laughs> Let's hear it. I'm the complete opposite of you. You, you want by the book. I need that. That is, uh, that is why I hired James. James, like, J James is in Canada. Like, he's not, he was, like, I, I hope James watches. I love you, James. Um, you know, but, like, I seriously, like, I, I knew, I, I followed all of the different coaches, and there were two girls in the Pittsburgh area at the time that were with James. And so I, you know, put feelers out there. I'm like, how is it? How, you know, and they kind of told me. And he is exactly, no BS. He'll give you that <clears throat> short response. Yeah. Like, he's not the guy. I'm going to be like, give me a moat, you know. Hype me up. No, like that's not, that's what I like. <laughs> but I think for doing competition, I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. For lifestyle, single mom, yeah. mother of multiple kids, going through a divorce, like someone, I don't want to say a real person, mm -hmm. but someone who just wants to get healthier, be happier, feel better in their clothes. They need, I think- a little bit of emotional support. They do. <laughs> I could not imagine. They need, they need a woman's touch. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the person for you. <laughs> but seriously, can you imagine like, you know, a, a mom, a, a divorcee, me responding to their check-in, like, fucking do better. Like, you're not going to Okay, keep, well, I don't know about that. But, you know but... what I mean, though. You're not yeah. going to hold a client. With that, with that attitude, yeah, I don't think no. So no. again, I think it depends on what your goal is. Yeah. Do you want to stick to mainly competition clients, or will you do lifestyle? No, I do my clients. I only have a handful right now, and they're okay. all lifestyle. Um, so you asked me what my favorite or ideal client would be. And that's my lifestyle? my ideal. No, my ideal oh, client would be the girl that my comes bad. to me and is like, "Can you just show me how to deadlift three hundred and fifty pounds? I can't figure this. this. Yeah, like I can't I can't figure this out. Like that's who I was. So I would just I would love that if someone came to me and said that. But um, no, I I think honestly, I I really can help a lot of people. I I'm very knowledgeable. Um, I just I just want people who are serious about change. Um, because I, I think I can really help them. And yeah. I, I want to help women um, specifically. And I think I do have that soft touch. But I but I will be straightforward. I mean, I'm not – if it's your goal, it's your goal. And it's it's on you. Yeah. I'm just your espresso. I'm just your kick. <laughs> that could be your little tagline. Yeah, maybe. I want to be your little, you know, Yeah. go. But you you're the – so we you talked drive. about we talked about your brand. Mm -hmm. I think just in our conversation, I think your brand is powerful woman, mm -hmm. both physically and mentally. Yes, you know, have like you have like that independence, dominating, wannabe China badass woman, right? Mm -hmm. But you also have a softer side. I do, yeah. And you want to be there for your client, just to kick them in gear a little bit, right? So if you're watching, male or female? Female only right now. Okay, yeah. so if you're, if you're a woman and you wanna either get stronger or look better in a bikini or be healthier if you're diabetic or high cholesterol, Chelsea's your girl. I got you. She right is here. very knowledgeable. She's done multiple mm -hmm. fitness competitions but powerlifting and bodybuilding and she has worked with top professional coaches she knows her shit so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's but yeah i think word of mouth is another huge business builder because yeah. if you help one or two people and they tell a friend or a family member like chelsea just helped me lose 20 pounds and i feel so much better like that helps too yeah and i'm hoping to get more of that too as i'm now now as i now have a small client roster to actually get that because right now 
it's tough because all I can really market is my knowledge, my accomplishments, and that, you know, yeah. portion of things. So yeah, it's it's been an interesting journey and I'm I'm excited. Like I said, this is the first time I don't have a competition planned. Um and I'm just excited to focus on this right now. And family, I have some I, I have vacations coming up. Uh Last year, I took my kids on vacation, and I was two and a half weeks out from a show. It worked. I did it. I forced it because I knew I was going to compete all year if it took that. I knew. So I committed. It was You yep. had to do it then? Or... I, I booked the vacation knowing I might have my pro card by then. I might not. Either way, we're going. I'm either going to be in prep or I'm not, and I was. <laughs> and so this year, I anyway, I'm really excited um, to be on vacation not worrying about it, not taking check-ins in my hotel room. Or, It'll be or nice. packing your scale. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Been there, done that. Yep. Um, all right. I'm going to arm wrestle you. Okay. We're going to arm wrestle. Okay. And I'm going to ask you a question okay. while we arm wrestle. You look concerned. No, I'm good. <laughs> you good? Yeah. This, you'll be just fine, I promise. All right. I'm going to move this out of the way. All right. I'll let you start whenever you're ready. Are you sure you you're, can handle you, this? I I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty ready. <laughs> now I'm scared. I like all my room. Here, I have to be able to hear your response. Oh, you're coming in hot. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting I'm getting ready. I can I use it? I can't use the table. That's against the rules. You can't do that. You do, you do what you need to do. Ready? I'll play by the rules. Okay, right, ready? All right. What's your relationship status on Facebook? <laughs> All right. I really was trying. Like I was I believe really you. going. <laughs> so Paige asked me, no, no, Jen Mascaro, the the realtor, she asked if I've ever lost. Uh-huh. And I haven't lost yet, but I have some big men coming on yeah. in the future that are probably gonna give me a run for my money. Okay. So I'm gonna have to just Tuck my tail between my legs and So whatever. you don't think you're gonna have that win? I'm not gonna win every one. Okay. There's no way. What's yeah. so nobody's beat you yet? No. What's the first winner gonna get? What should they get? <laughs> a a I bottle think of a their brand choice. New bottle. You should Other, have one that's ready. Actually, like a reasonably priced one you're willing to give away that's as a, a really, gift. That's a really good idea, actually. You should. That should be, yeah. That hmm. should be come on my podcast, and if you can beat me in arm wrestling, you get a prize. I think you just helped me with some branding. There you go. <laughs> so my question to you while we did that is. Yes. So you don't. you. Like, okay, we're on that. You're good. All right, good. So you're not in a relationship. You are you Are you pursuing one? I am single right now. Um, and no, I'm not on the market. I'm, um, I'm very much in a, on a healing journey. I will call it on a spiritual journey. I'm just, um, I'm enjoying working on myself right now, building my business, focusing on my kids and, um, just life right now. Yeah. Yeah. I it's the season that. I'm in. <laughs> you just want less distraction. I do. Yeah. And I just, like I said, I, I feel unhealed um, just from other life experiences. And I just really want to take some time to myself right now. So I am single, but I'm going to stay that way, <laughs> at least for now. Yeah. And you have a very good reason for that. Yeah. Um, if you could change anything in your life, that you've dealt with up till now, would you change anything? Are there any decisions that you wish you would have made differently or looking back on certain things, you wish you would have just taken a different road? Okay, there's one little one. Okay. But my, my overall general answer to you is no. Because... I think if there's something that I would have wanted to change, um, you know, it would be to have probably not gone in IT and started, you know, in fitness right out of college mm -hmm. and been more on this path and really followed where I was, you know, in high school because I feel that I've 
I'm on a journey of just truly being authentic with myself. And so this has all resurfaced. I feel, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. So I think, you know, if I would change something, it would be that, but I really wouldn't because yeah. I've just, I, I also wouldn't be me right now if it didn't go that way. So yeah. it's, no, not really. Um, but the little one thing that, that came to my mind, and I always think about this, like I always think of this, in high school, senior year, there was in our French club, they went to France for two and a half weeks. And I was given the chance to go on that trip. My parents were handing me the money and they said, you can either, you know, do this because you want to go or you can put it towards your car that you're getting. You took the car. I did. And I'm upset about that. Like I want, and I know I can go to France if I want to, but it, it, I, I can't repeat that France trip with my friends in high school. And I really love, like, I just, I wish I would have done was, that. So that was, was something was I can't. It was the lost memory that you feel like you missed out on. It was a missed opportunity that I can't get back. Like I can go to France, but I just wish I would have. I same. like that was a decision I made that I'm like, I really wish. I don't know. Maybe I wish my parents would have been. Like, no, just do the it's kind of persuasion. Yeah, not, yeah, not gave me the. What kind of car was it? Was it even worth it? No. <laughs> Damn. No. It was what a was Sunfire. It? A Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> yes. My mom had a yellow one. It was cute, though. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> it was yellow. My mom had a yellow Sunfire. Mine was. Well, let's see if you can guess the color of mine. What do you think it was? I'm trying to think what colors they offered. White. Mm hmm. Red. Yes. Okay. With cheetah print seat covers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Naturally. Yes. Do you have any stickers? No. No on stickers. The never. Nothing? Never any stickers. No. No, no. like bad bitch or no. Maria. So I got Maria a birthday present. It was the middle finger sticker for each side of her car. Because that's her personality. Yeah. In you're actually going to get to meet her after this, but I'm excited to meet her. Yeah. You, you guys are going to hit it off. I can tell, but yeah. So I got her middle finger stickers on free side of her car. So all these people are seeing this like beautiful girl driving this car with like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, it's just the whole vibe. It was funny. That is funny. Um, so I got, I can actually drive a stick. I got a Camaro was the first car that I actually like fully bought myself. So that was like my, my bad bitch car, but it okay. was, was short lived. It was like four years. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready to have a baby. And I bought a Jeep. So <laughs> I miss driving a stick. Every car I owned up I until do, not do. long ago was a stick. I almost got a Wrangler when I traded in my Grand Cherokee recently because I I obviously am sticking stick with again, an yeah. SUV, but I wanted to drive a stick again. And I, I ended up not just because a Wrangler is not what I want. But There's not too many cars you can buy these days no. with a stick. No. They're hard to find. They're very hard. Yeah. One Practi more thing. Pra practical cars. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, high school. How do you think people that who knew in, in high school, how do you th – you th <laughs> let me try that again. <laughs> the people in high school that graduated with you. What kind of like image do you think they had of you? Do you, do you think you're well respected? Do you think you were hated? Were you? I would say a healthy mix of both, depending on who you are. Why do you think you were hated by some? Um, I don't know for the way that I dressed. Um, well, that whole topic <laughs> we can go down. Just you know, just um, I mean, I I dealt with mean girls. Yeah. In high school, for sure. Um, people that just, you know, didn't like me. I think by the time I was in senior year, depending on who I was friends with, right? Different friend groups, not liking other friend groups. But like I said, I was on homecoming court in senior year. So, so I think enough people <laughs> obviously yeah. had to have liked me. You know, I think I was liked. But I think no matter what, you still have those people who, who don't. I think it's jealousy. Yeah. Especially at that age. Yeah. Even as an as, as adults. Yeah. There's so many people that hate people for no reason. Like Jen, mm -hmm. I yeah. already mentioned her. Yeah. She has haters everywhere that don't even know her. Yeah. It's just like, why? But so how did you dress? Kind of like I am right now. Just <laughs> like flashy. a princess. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, everything always matched. 
Um, and my mom's kind of like this too. I'm a, I'm not super into astrology, but I'm a Libra and I'm like the f- exactly what a Libra. Okay. <laughs> Do you follow it. like horoscopes? Do you believe not them? really? I'm, I'm not huge into it. I almost kind of hate that I said it a little bit, but I do, I, I do believe. Um, so have you ever heard of, um, uh, was it like human design chart? I don't think so. You're going to have to look into it. And anybody watching, you should look up your human design chart. You can do it for free. Um, it it kind of ties into astrology. But like, it's, to answer that question, I believe that you know, I am fully a Libra. Like, the, there's no doubt in my mind. Do I believe that like all of the day-to-day stuff fully tracks? There's a lot that goes on there. But yeah. I, I do. I do believe. Just general personality and beliefs. Just, yeah, and, yeah. 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 Um, and then, what was I just talking about? The other thing? Um, about being hated by people, uh, dressing, <laughs> oh, no, human, the way no, you no, dress. No, no, no. See, I lost my train. <laughs> I lose my train of thought so much. No, human design chart. Oh. Um, there's this chart you can look up. And I don't know if you're like, I told you I'm on this whole spiritual healing journey. It is so cool. You can put in your name, you know, the time that you were born. And it will give you like all of this information about yourself and you have to put in the location of where you were born. And it will tell you if you're like a generator. Um, I can, it, it, This could be an entire episode, so I'm not going to go down. But it's it's really cool. It sounds interesting. It's really cool. I might have to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Get, were you going to say something? Yeah. Well, what, why was I even telling you that? I don't even know. We were talking about how you dressed. And you said you're Libra through and through. Yeah. Well, then you, you started asked talking me about, about the astro- astrology. So back yeah. to yeah. So, I mean, I'm just I'm I've always been extremely into fashion. I like I got best dressed in high school and my junior high. Like that was important to me. I um I've always just head to toe. I wore high heels every day in high school. Anyone that went to high school with me will tell you Seriously? that. In high school. And, oh yeah. Wow. In high school, stilettos, boots like this. I mean, I just, I was, I've always been extremely into fashion, and that's, you know, even as a person that works from home that only has, you know, leaves the house mostly to do fitness stuff. I'm still, you know, <laughs> okay. and it's it's funny because my my wardrobe has changed from either like super bougie like designer like i'm gonna go out like this or just like fitness, fitness yeah. there's, there's no, no in between. normal everyday yeah. stuff anymore yeah. it's funny um have you ever but, deadlifted in heels no that could be a video i could i could put my my bikini heels on there you go. yeah <laughs> hopefully they don't break yeah so as we close out here chelsea do you have any questions for me i do i want to know more about where you're going with this podcast so what I know now, right, I, I had followed you um, through Joellen. Correct. You had trained Joellen a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, and I've, I've followed her fitness journey, which I love. Um, but I, I started following the podcast, and I knew a few of the guests on with us both, you know, in the Plum area. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it was more of a fitness podcast at first. Yes. And so when you asked me if I wanted to be on, I said, okay, yeah, sure. But is it like more fitness? What's getting you were like, honestly, no, it's kind of evolving. So what I want to know, what it, what are your goals with this? Well, how has this evolved and where do you see this going? That's a really good question. So when I started this podcast and my YouTube channel, I did a ton of research. And one of the things that I read about pretty much in every research journey I took was you need to find your niche. You need to find your target audience. Mm -hmm. When I start, obviously the name of the podcast is Barbells and Bourbon. So there's two completely opposite niches, right? So it's like, do I pick one or the other? I guess on the surface, this was supposed to have a fitness undertone, Mm -hmm. but it's turned into more of anybody is a welcome guest on this. I've had people on here that probably don't exercise at all, and that's fine. This is a platform for whoever's sitting in your seat to talk about themselves, whatever you want to talk about, whether it's really personal shit and we're going to cry or things that you've never confessed before. This is your opportunity to unleash and just kind of like maybe even like confess their certain things. But more importantly, your story Everything you talked about 
today is, go is going to resonate with at least one person. And that one person is being helped. Yeah. I want to help people. Okay. So I know there's going to be someone watching this or listening to this that is like, oh, I'm a mother of two also. I'm lost in trying to find who I am or I'm stuck between these two different personalities or mm -hmm. in hearing you is going to help them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the ultimate goal is just helping people. Um, with that being said, to grow this is complicated mm -hmm. because I'm not targeting certain people. I'm targeting everybody, which sounds like that's the best thing that you can possibly do. But right. in YouTube land, in the algorithm, that's not the best approach. But if this gets to the point where I start making money off of it, great. Mm -hmm. that's not the goal here. I want to gain more viewers. I want to gain more subscribers because the more of those I have, the more people I can help, the more people you can help. And the next guest who's going to sit there can help. Yeah. So that's a long answer to your question. Yeah, no, that's, but, that's good. Though. Yeah, that's it. I think you're definitely helping people. Um, I've had in, you know, after this episode airs and you start getting feedback from friends and family and even strangers, I want you to share that with me because I've had a lot of my guests send me screenshots of text messages that they've gotten from all kinds of different people saying how much they've been helped or, oh my God, I had no idea you went through that. I feel so bad for you. I'm so sorry you had to struggle with that. Yeah. That is why I do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even talk about my mom life. Yeah. I was, I was just thinking about that when you mentioned, um, I think that's important. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a pretty it's, it's, it's a pretty big part of my life. Yes. Um, so yeah, I have a seven and eight year old, a uh, boy and a girl, um, Violet and Bo. It was funny. They were with me all the way up until you know I just yeah. pulled up here, and I said they said do good, mom, good luck. Don't because I said I'm a little nervous, and that's they so said cute. yeah, they were like don't be nervous, and I said well if there's something that you know I would share about you, what what would you guys want it to be? Like what's your favorite thing about you? And Violet said that I'm athletic, just like and I'm me. competitive. Yeah, and so she said, and I said, Bo, how about you? And he goes that I love video games. <laughs> And I was like, okay, that is what I will tell Typical. the people. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, they're 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 both in baseball. Um, I love being a mom. I do. It it's so exhausting. It's like he's <laughs> like I will openly admit, like I am I'm a selfish person. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could like I care about myself. I believe in filling your cup up first as a mother. I can tell you firsthand, I'm not a good mom if I don't. Like, I'm not the, sorry, I'm not the best mom that okay. I can be when I'm not taking care of myself, when my fitness schools aren't, you know, being taken care of, when yeah. I can't get my workout in. It's, it's hard yeah. being a mom. It really is hard juggling it all. But it's, they're so awesome too. Like, they're yeah. like the coolest little people. <laughs> it's amazing. So, yeah. I mean, and, you know, you're at, you're at a certain phase or six or seven and eight, right? Yeah. As they get older, I mean, I have all teenagers now and it's just so crazy how like each phase of life changes and like yeah. the, the different things you're exposed to as a parent that you never thought you would be like my son. Sorry, buddy. Just this morning, he tried calling me. I missed it. I was getting my car washed. Then he called me again. He's like, dad, I just got pulled over. <laughs> it's like, uh. so these are the things like <laughs> that are happening now. Yeah. But he got pulled over. So he has, his car has a lot of, his, all his windows are tinted. Yeah. Pretty dark. Mm -hmm. You know, his wheels are black. <laughs> he, he, it looks like an up to no good car. Hey, He's, that's what my Camaro looked like. So. I, I bet. I'm the not cop judging. followed him for mm -hmm. probably two miles before putting his lights on. And his inspection is, is expired by a couple months. You can't see the inspection sticker when you're behind the car. I don't know if you can look up a license plate number and see what the inspection dates are. I don't know if that's a thing. Cops? Yes, no? I think it is now. Is it? Or with the, the new sticker they put on, they can see it. It's well, there's no sticker like on the license plate anymore. 
They went away with registration stickers. Yeah, it, I think it is then. I think you can look at that. Okay. Well, if that's the case. Otherwise. We should know this probably. Yeah. yeah. As adults. <laughs> you probably yeah, should know. Keep out of trouble. But yeah, anyways, yeah, he called me. He's like, Dad, I got pulled over. He gave me a warning. So thank God he got a warning. Oh, that's and good. And not yeah. an actual ticket. But yeah, I mean, being a dad is the best. I got pictures of them yeah. on the opposite side of this camera. But yeah. Um, do you have a public service announcement? as we close. And if you do, talk to them. I would say that my public service announcement is just that I am open for coaching. So if you are a woman, no matter where you live, I am online coaching. I do offer in person in the Pittsburgh area if you have a membership for online coaching with me. But yeah, if you need help as a lifestyle client, um, like I said, I'm I'm interested in picking up uh, bikini clients. I would prefer to stick to the Pittsburgh area. So if you are a you know beginner, you want to dabble into the bodybuilding world, um, you know especially bikini, I would be a great person to reach out to. Very reasonable price, knowledgeable, and I can get your feet wet. So I would say that's that's my announcement. If you're looking to get yourself you know, back on your feet with fitness. I'm your girl. Love it. And I'm going to tag the, your Instagram account. I'm going to tag your website for your coaching. So all of that's going to be available for mm -hmm. anybody who wants Chelsea's help. Yes. But you are an awesome guest. Thank you. You are a very mm -hmm. dynamic individual, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. Um, I see a bright future for you. I hope yeah. your fitness your fitness journey, business, and I hope you get your pro card yeah. soon. Oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going for it. Now that's the attitude. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe my maybe my public service announcement is also that I'm, I think I'm sticking with bikini. I was thinking about doing wellness oh. um, just to keep with the heavy lifting. But I, I think I'm sticking. I'm, I'm going to be a bikini girl. I think I'm going to stay there. Through so, and through. Through and through. Yeah. All right. We're going to hey. get that pro card. Awesome having you, Chelsea. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. And I will see you on the next episode of Barbells and Bourbon. Peace. <laughs>